Today's video is brought to you by Solder Stick. They have solutions for connecting wires to other wires, terminals, or anything else you can think of. There will be a short video explaining more about them at the end. Now enjoy our regular video. Hey, what's happening guys? Check this out. This is a 1960s Gibson GA5T Skylark tube amplifier. And my buddy Snow Diddley brought it over today uh, during rehearsal. And he said he found it in the barn. And could I fix it? Well, I hope so. Let's take a look. All right, so from the best of my research so far, we have uh, two inputs, uh, tremolo and a rotating type power switch leads me to believe this is a 66 through 68 GA5T. Oh, they started making these in the 50s. And this is what is known as the, uh, the white panel. 117 volt, 60 cycles, 0.6 amp, needs a 1.5 amp fuse. Is there one in there? Yeah, there's a fuse in there. I don't know what kind of shape it's in, and that connector and its matching hole here are corroded as mare day. So, yeah, we're not plugging that in anytime soon. Ungrounded two leg power cord. There's some sort of a rack in here. Usually those were for um, a pedal to turn your reverb on and off. This doesn't have a, uh, a jack for a pedal on it anywhere. So maybe this was just, uh, they use that for other speakers in the case. Uh, this is a 10 inch Gibson ultrasonic speaker. So let's, uh, Let's have a look on the inside. Oh my, that is crunchy. And it doesn't feel like it's going anywhere. Let's see what we got going on over here. That was not as bad. Yeah, that one's coming out, no problem. Go back over here and try this other one. Oh, yeah, that broke. All right, I'm gonna move this, flip it around so we can see better. All right, here's a pretty good view of our insides. This should be our first stage gain over here. We would say 12AX7. You don't see any markings on it, but I believe that's what that is. This will be our second stage gain and tremolo. This is a 6C4. So this would then be our, uh, our power tube. Six B Q5. Now see these two guys here are triodes so you have an anode a cathode and a grid and, and it's doubled you see you have one on each side those are triodes this is a pentode so you actually have five of them going on in there and then this should be our rectifier tube 
6B Q5. What the hell is this one? These are both 6B Q5s. Does this only have one? Is this a rectifier? 6C4? I gotta look that up. Hang on. Alright, now this is getting weird. We've got four tube slots. That's definitely a 12AX7. There's the tube that came out. And there's a 12AX7 out of my collection. And as you can see, that will fit in there just fine. So here's the mystery tube. And it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins. And it says six C4. Okay. So six C4 says it's a triode. But it don't look like a triode. Just, I'm confused. But we'll get to the real point of confusion in a minute. So these two 6BQ5s, those are power tubes. So this is a push-pull style amp. Where's our rectifier tube? That's what I'm confused about. And there's like a hundred different schematics and a hundred different layouts of this. Because like I said, they made this amp from 1954 until 68 or 69. That's a hell of a long lifetime for an amplifier. So we got our mains input transformer. This is an output transformer. And then... There's another transformer here. Well, what's this transformer for? Maybe for the tremolo? I don't know. Like I said, there's so many schematics for this. All right, let's see if we can get the... Uh... I would say circuit board, but this would be probably point-to-point -point wiring, so I doubt there's going to be any circuit board in here. Oh, come on. Sliding it backwards. Oh, I'm getting caught on something. Probably, probably getting caught on those. Hmm. Okay, I got it mostly open. I just can't get it the rest of the way out. I'll, 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 I'll play around with it later. All right, let's see what we can see. So if you look back up in here, you can see our inputs. There's our input resistors coming into this little toggle board here. Why is that? Up in the air like that. Hmm. And these are all of our connections going to and from our tubes, which there are our tube sockets right there. A little board. There are two filter capacitors, 20 microfarad, 20 microfarad. They have to go, obviously. Yeah, they have to go. And I solved the uh, rectifier tube problem. It doesn't use a rectifier tube. If you look, Right here, yeah. Right under those, right under those green wires that you can't see, coming right off of the uh, 
the power transformer here, right here. This is our B plus. And it is going to these two little diodes right there. And then there's the other side of our power transformer. Well, now that I know what is inside of this, I can figure out which schematic goes to it and figure out what parts we're going to need. Like these, they have to go. These orange drops, I don't know, I'll have to test the orange drops. Check the resistors if they're not burnt. They should be pretty much okay. Yes, this is going to be quite an exciting project. So, I'm going to clean this up, figure out how to get that tray out of there, and see if I can't get some replacement capacitors going. And once we get those parts, we will come back again and put them in and see if we can't restore this beautiful old amplifier. I love this kind of stuff. In fact, let me show you something. This is the late 60s, I think 67 or 68. Tysco Spectrum ET220. That is a beautiful vintage guitar. Look at those pickups. And there's your pickup selector. And I think these over here are like phase switches. So, yes, yeah, very cool. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I will figure out which one of these schematics go with that amplifier. And we'll get our parts ordered. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to Jim. That's it. I'm out. Peace. We've all been there, right? We've all spliced a set of wires together and either used some electrical tape or a wire nut or something to connect them together. There's always a better way. If you need them permanently connected, I suggest the solder stick, uh, solder connectors where you heat them up with a heat gun and they melt together. But if you need something a little less permanent, Spade connectors. We have a male and a female connector which fit together uh, like so. You crimp those onto the ends of your wires and you, you look like you know what you're doing. And have you ever come across something like this where the wires have been stripped? Focus and just crushed underneath a screw to hold them in place, well, time and temperature will cause those wires to move and flex and eventually come loose, which can definitely lead to a hazard. In that case, something like the solder stick ring connectors are just what the doctor ordered. Crimp these guys on your wire. They have them for all different size wires. Heat them up. This heat shrink will shrink down, giving you a nice insulated connection to your wire that you can then put underneath that screw and have a nice, professional-looking solution. Solder stick. You can see their website right there, www.solderstick.com. Check them out. See if they have a project or a product that works for you.